Hey, I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and welcome to the shop. Today, got something great for you. Occasionally, you get into a bottle of wine where you want to save a little bit for later. So you need a wine bottle stopper. Never used one myself, but some people do. This is one made out of cast acrylic with a little trinket on top of a piece of oak made with some gold veining. Put about five or six different things together to show you this. Well, I mean, that is nice. It appears to be floating in that acrylic. Well, because it is. Watch. Okay, let's start off with the block. I used a 2x2x2 two by two by two piece of oak and knocked the corners off. I put a fluted birch doll in it. Then I mounted it in my spigot jaws, about 2500 RPMs, and I knocked that end off and I cleaned that end up. That's really important. Now, once you get that knocked off, then you loosen up the chuck, tighten up your tailstock a little bit, and bring it in a little bit so it's pushed up flat up against the spigot jaws now. Less vibration that way. Now, to round this out, I'll crank it back up to about 2500 RPMs again. This is a good speed because there's less hitting and brisance on it, and I'm using my rough and gouge. Now, this is a slicing cut with a rough and gouge, and I use it until I have it round. Uh, once I have it round, I get off of this tool and pick up any, any other tool that I like to to start putting a design to it. I like a very basic shape. To get that shape, I use my little quarter-inch Ellsworth, and it gets so much vibration on this oak, you got to get in close to it. But that's it, I make a couple of cuts. Now, to do this cut, start with a flute almost vertical, and then roll it open a little bit so that you can run on down. You're cutting something that would be sanding at about 220 or better at this point. Really cleans it up nicely. I bring the base down to maybe an inch and a quarter, put a little angle on it. Now, this is the first cutting, so all this is going to get recut and sanded later on, so it's a basic shape. Up near the top, I won't go ahead and smooth it out a little bit. Like I said, it's a basic shape. Once you have that ready, then we're going to move on to the next part, and that's creating a receiver in the top of the cut. Now I've turned it around, moved my tool rest a little bit, using my parting tool to go in here and put about a 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch groove. Now you can use your parting tool or a little fine bedan, and uh, this one's cut on a little bit of an angle. You can see that it, uh, the tip is not straight across. This is one of my favorite little multi-purpose tools. I want to clean this up and flatten that bottom out and I'm also going to flip it around and use that end that's a little askew turn it or see turn and then go a little bit under cut that's going to give the gel or the um, acrylic some place to sit now my sizing tool is a three ounce Dixie cup and you'll understand the next step see that's about I can't be too much smaller I remove the bottom of that Dixie cup with my utility knife, then I drop the cup through it, pull it up tight, and then I tape around with a painter's tape to seal up the crack. That is my mold. I use a casting resin, you can pick this up at Michael's Arts and Crafts, and you got to buy the activator a little bit separate, and I like to add a little glitter to it so you don't see the wood in the bottom, it's just a tube of glitter you would get at Michael's and you whip the whole thing up you gotta watch now if you're going to go a quarter inch thick it's eight ounces eight drops per ounce don't go too fast it will get brittle you don't want the brittle acrylic um, you count out your eight drops you put the little glitter in there and you gotta stir it for about one minute I use a little pick thing so I can get down in the corner and whip it up really good once you've got it stirred up really well if you cut any corners on this, you're going to end up with pockets, and those pockets will be more brittle than the rest, and it will show up. Pour it and bl blow the dust out. Yeah. And then pour in your glitter-coated acrylic into it. Cover it with a 3x5 card. 
About 20 minutes later, it is set up enough to where now you can play around. I'm going to put a rose in this one. It's not the one I'm going to turn in a few minutes. But I had to push it down there to get all the air bubbles out around this cloth rose. And once it was well coated, then I pushed it down and got it centered. No air bubbles, no way for it to stay floating. I made sure I had about a quarter inch or more of acrylic over the top of the rose and pushed it right down in there, kept it tight. Now, the next step, once it's cured, I normally wait about one day. Then I chuck it back up again. I remove the wrapper and the tape and I clean up all the, the, the stuff that ran down the bottom edge. And then I use my Ellsworth as a shear scraper. It works really well. And then I change over this really cheap scraper from Sears and that gets me to this mode. This is where I can start sanding. At this point, I've got a few little air bubbles right there and some grit that'll have to get gone. So I start sanding with 180 grit and I use a sanding wax. It's just a beeswax and mineral oil blend. And I sanded with 180 through 600 using the wax and then 800 and 1000 I sand using water. Yeah, that's right. I'm not afraid of the water over the lathe. The WD-40 and you'll never know. Now, I like to add a few little details. So here I'm just laying my start scraper over on the side. And I'm going to put two little grooves and burn two little grooves into the side. And you'll see what happens when I put the buff and rub on later. This is stamp pad ink that's been diluted with denatured alcohol. It makes a really great stain in very vi vibrant colors. That stamp pad stuff comes in about a dozen colors. This is Rub and Buff. It's available at Michael's. It's a colored wax product or semi wax product. Uh, and you rub it on and rub it in. And after I rub it in, you'll see it fills all the grains in this oak really nicely. Um, I take the wire and push it down into those two grooves like where I burned them before and they stand out really bright. Now I'll take a buffer and buff this off in a little bit and see the, see how it makes that sparkle? The grain stands out. And now to polish the cap at the very end, I use a plexiglass powder. Oh, remember, if, when you do put that floor cork on, if you're doing them cheap, put a little super glue to keep it in place. And when you did that little undercut, that made that little fit right there where you don't see the line. It's a secret OB taught me a long time ago. Have a little fun with these. I've done them with antique bus tokens for my favorite bus driver every morning. And I've done them with little trinkets and baby dolls from the King Cakes and LSU Tiger Heads with purple and gold around it. And then stain this purple and then use the gold rough and buff and wow, imagine the possibilities for a simple little bottle stopper. Have fun with them. Get out in the shop, turn today and Hey, show me a picture. Send me a picture of what you do. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to copy it if it looks really good. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan, making shavings. See you next time.